Welcome to Module 1, Lesson 18. Let's get started. Today, we will be learning how to apply the distributive property. We are learning this so that we can multiply and divide fluently. We will use math in many real life situations. We will know that we are successful when we can model decomposing units and using the distributive property to solve for larger multiplication facts. Remember that to decompose means to break apart. How many more rows to make seven rows of three? So we have one, two, three, four, five, five rows of three. And the unknown is how many more rows of three we need to get to seven rows of three. Let's count up from five, six, seven. That's right, we need two more rows of three. So now we have seven rows of three for the entire array. The first five rows would be expressed as five times three. Under that, we've added two more rows and that's expressed as two times three. We can also put this in a number bond where the largest expression is at the top of the number bond. And the largest expression to represent the entire array is seven times three and that's decomposed or broken apart into five times three and two times three. On the bottom of the screen, you see a distributed addition equation. So we've taken two smaller expressions. We're going to add them together to equal a larger expression. So what is the product of five times three? Three, six, nine, 12, 15. Add to that the product of two times three, three, six. And then we should be able to determine the product of seven times three. So what is 15 plus six? Fifteen plus six is twenty-one. Let's count up from fifteen. Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. So seven times three is twenty-one. Fill in the missing factor to show how you can decompose nine times four. So if we want to imagine nine rows of four, and we're starting with five rows of four, how many rows of four must we add to get to nine? Let's count up from five, six, seven, eight, nine. We need to add four more rows of four. So the missing factor is a four. So looking at this equation, you can see that this five plus this four is equal to this nine. You'll also notice that the second factor always remains the same. We're talking about equal groups of four. Draw a number bond to model how you broke apart the expression. So let's think, what should go in the top of the number bond? Yes, the largest expression. So we'll be moving this largest expression to the top, and then we will add the smaller expressions to the bottom. So we can add five times four to this circle and four times four to this circle. It would look like this. Solve the smaller expressions and add them together to find the larger fact. So we need to solve five times four 
and we need to solve four times four and then add them together to find the, the product of nine times four. So let's try five times four first. Four, eight, 12, 16, 20. Five times four is 20. What's four times four? Four, eight, 12, 16. Four times four is 16. So if we add together 20 plus 16, that would be the product of nine times four. 20 plus 16 equals nine times four. Yes, 20 plus 16 is equal to 36. So we now know that nine times four is 36. This would help you if you weren't able to quickly multiply nine times four in your head, but you know that five times four is 20 and four times four is 16, and you can add those together and do the mental math to get nine times four. This is going to help you later on when you get to fourth grade, when you're multiplying double digit numbers, and we get to those larger numbers, you're going to want to know how to decompose them. All right, let's put this to the test with a read, draw, write question. Remember, we'll do this one together, and then I'll give you one to do on your own. Read, draw, write is sometimes called the RDW process. We read the question and pick out the important information. We draw a picture to help you solve the problem. And then you write the answer as a sentence. And you would like to have a complete sentence that uses part of the question in the answer, as well as explaining how you arrived at your solution. So we'll do this one together. So I'll begin by reading and annotating the question. Andrew used the break apart and distribute strategy to solve seven times four. He wrote seven times four equals four times four plus blank times four. What is the missing factor? Draw a number bond to model and solve for the larger fact. Okay, so the question is, what is the missing factor? That's the question that we have to answer. And the question specifies that we are to draw a number bond in our answer as well. So where it says draw a picture for the second step, we must draw a number bond. Okay, at this time you can pause the video if you don't have paper and pencil or a whiteboard, or you can go to a Jamboard and I'll show you how to do that. A Jamboard is just an online whiteboard. And if you have access to Google, you can do this as well. So go to the top of your browser and type Jamboard, J-A-M-B-O-A-R-D dot Google dot com. And if you would like a link, you can go to the description box below and copy and paste the link into your browser. All right, so we're going to press the plus button to open a new Jamboard. And I'm going to grab the pen tool and choose my color. I'll be writing in red. So let's go back to the question. We want to make sure that we have precise information from the question. We're trying to find out what is seven times four by decomposing it into five times four and another number. So let's start by drawing an array that is seven times four. When you draw your array, you can write circles, you can make X's, you can use any shape that you would like. The circles are a little messy on Jamboard. Okay, that's one, two, three, four, five rows. Here's the sixth row. And the seventh row. Okay, so going back to the question, I want to deco decompose into five times four and some other number times four. 
So I'm going to draw a line under the fifth row of four. One, two, three, four, five. That's my five times four. And now I can see that I have two more rows of four. So that missing factor is a two, right? Five times four in parentheses, of course, to set it apart, plus two times four equals seven times four. Wow, that's a lot of work. I'm going back to my question now to make sure that I have all the information that was given to me. Yes, five, five, five times four plus two times four equals seven times four. So now I can answer with the question, what is the missing factor? But I still haven't drawn a number bond to model it. So let's do that now. In my number bond, I always want the largest expression to go on top. So that would be my seven times four. And I have two expressions that I've broken it into, five times four and two times four. Now, in order to solve, I need to find the product of each smaller expression and add them together. So I know that five times four is 20. And I know that two times four is eight. So the product of seven times four must be 20 plus eight. That's easy. 28. Okay, so I've solved the equation and I've found the missing factor and I've drawn a number bond. I think I'm finished. The only thing left to do is write my sentence. So the question is, what is the missing factor? So I want to start my sentence with the missing factor is. The missing factor is two because five plus two equals seven. I drew a number bond. Now number bond is a great math vocabulary word to use. We want to include math vocabulary. I drew a number bond to solve seven times four equals five times four plus two times, oops, two times four. The answer is seven times four equals 28. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. I've used words from the question to complete the answer. I've explained how I arrived at my solution. I'm happy with my answer. So now I'll go back to the answer key to check how close I am to the answer that is given and it doesn't have to be exactly the same. It just has to be my best work. So let's see how close. Oops. We don't wanna go. Okay, so this is the answer from the answer key. The missing factor is two because five plus two equals seven. I know that 20 plus eight equals 28. So seven times four equals 28. 
Now it's your turn to practice on your own. After I finish speaking, you'll pause the video so that you can reread the question and annotate it or write down the most important information. Do your drawing with your model, and then you will write sentences to give the answer as well as explain the answer. And you'll just explain as well as you possibly can. And when you're ready, you'll go to the description box below and you'll compare your answer to the answer in the description box. I want to impress that it does not have to be worded exactly the same as long as it has the correct answer and the same general ideas. Use the distributive property to decompose eight times four. First, multiply five times four, then add three more fours. Draw a number bond to solve. Explain your strategy. Now go do your very best and I will see you in the next video.